you believe in UFOs? I don't know. Well, a long-awaited <laughs> intelligence report on unidentified flying objects has now been released to the public, which it actually calls unexplained aerial phenomena. Yeah, it shows only one of 144 mysterious sightings could be explained. Yeah, the government report says one of the objects turned out to be a large deflating balloon. That's it. Oh. They couldn't explain 143 other mysterious flying objects. The report did not mention aliens or extraterrestrials, but it also did not rule out the unexplained objects were spoofs or errors. The chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Adam Schiff of Burbank, had this to say about the report. We should approach these questions without preconceptions to encourage a thorough, systematized, and let me say that again, systematized analysis of the potential national security and flight safety risks posed by unidentified aerial phenomena. Whether they are the result of a foreign adversary, atmospheric or other aerial phenomena, space debris, or something else entirely. Let's just hope they're nice. <laughs> like we said, just make friendly, right? like, you know, Hope they're friendly. And his crew, we, we love each other. I know, there we go. Shalom, I'd like to give all unagorian praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakaqwinash, and I give double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Salutations to our used to say, I can't push this right across the four corners of the world. And this is an article from HinduStandTimes.com, and the title says, UFO Report. U.S. says can identify one of 144 flying objects with high confidence. The report, called Preliminary Assessment, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, was released by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. And this was published on June 26, 2021. The United States on Friday released a report on unidentified flying objects to characterize the potential threat posed by them and it showed that the government was only able to explain one of the 144 cases of unidentified flying objects reported by military planes with high confidence. We were able to identify one reported unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, with high confidence. In that case, we identified the object as a large deflating balloon. The others remain unexplained, the report read. So of course, dealing with Esau Edom, the vessel of people that the most I chosen to dishonor, representing these so-called Caucasians, and more so the elites of the Edomite nation, they are in control of this mainstream news. And part of the mainstream media goes into witchcrafts, sorceries, fraud, deceptions that they put out on the masses of the people to get them to not panic or overreact. But as of us, the hopefully let the ones of us that are blessed with that spiritual eyesalve, meaning the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh we can see right past through these lies. Because here it is with Esau telling the people within this article that these so-called UAPs or UFOs was nothing but a large deflating balloons. But they could not explain the other ones that they saw in the so-called reports they've been receiving. So there's just more signs and tokens through the spirit that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has his eyes upon this sinful kingdom. And part of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's eyes are the holy angels, which are so-called dark-skinned men. And this sinful kingdom is referencing is America known as Babylon the Great. And this is why we're seeing throughout the news of these so-called UFO reports, because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to get ready to visit this earth. And this is the book of 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. So you measure what you see within the news and you filter it out with the Holy Scriptures, which is that spiritual measuring rod. And when thou seest part of the sun's past, which I have told thee before. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh told us through the Spirit, through the prophecies, that these were going to be some of the signs that we're going to see in these very last days. Linking up with the book of Revelation 12, chapter 12, verse, how Esau knew it, that he has but a short time because he's seeing numerous accounts of so-called UFO reports. And a lot of them, he's not even reporting to the mainstream news. So these are part of the signs or the tokens that's being passed in these last days. It says, verse 2, Then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Because you go more into the word visit, it goes into to inflict punishment, to attack, to strike, to torture or torment. And that's exactly what Yahweh Bashim is going to do to the sinners of this world. Two thirds of the nation of Israel that are consumed with the ways of Esau's philosophies. 
And you already know by default, Edom and these other nations are totally out of there. So like I stated that the eyes of the Lord are upon this sinful kingdom, hence the angels, which are nothing but messengers or ministers of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And let's get there in the book of Psalm 104, starting verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my power. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Verse 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. So this is not talking about just a regular rain cloud that we see in the sky. The chariots of the so-called UFOs are known as clouds also in the scriptures. That's why I stated by Yahweh Shah, who is the savior of the nation of Israel, on his second return, he's going to come with clouds and every eye should see him, meaning that he's going to be wet strong with the thousands of heaven, which represents the holy angels going to be right along with Yahweh Shah, and he's going to be in charge. So it says, who led the bees of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walking upon the wings of the wind. And here's the point, verse 4, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flame and fire. So the angels are nothing but messengers or ministers, servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, doing the bidding of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And Yahweh Shai is the top angel in the spiritual realm, giving out the decrees to be carried out in this earthly realm. And that's why we're seeing numerous reports of these so-called UFOs or so-called UAP that Esau like to call them that are continuing visiting this world because we are at the end of this so-called white man's chapter. And the elites of Esau Edom knows this. So that's why they're trying to usher in their new world order because they want to upset biblical prophecies. So majority of these people, including two thirds of the nation of Israel, they will classify these angels or chariots as unidentifiable because they subscribe cold hardly to the message of Esau's mainstream news going to his sorceries. As it says in the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, gross darkness to people. And linking up with the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, it's not given to two thirds of the nation of Israel to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So going back to that spiritual eyesight that was given to us as the hopeful elect, we would classify these angels or the chariots as identifiable. And that's through the spirit. And that's a part of our main ticket as the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel to get up out this prison planet. And that's why our forefathers, when they was out there on the slave plantations, more so in those cotton fields, they saw these so-called aircrafts hovering over them. And they were singing the song, Swing Low, Swing Chariot, coming forth to take me home. And that home they was referring to was Israel. So majority of our people, they don't care or even want to find out what's the history of these so-called UFOs and how they really link up to our history as Israelites. But that's a part of our glorious gospel as the hopeful elect. Which leads me to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So the God of this world is referencing Esau Edom. Pursuant to the book of Job 9, 24, as it says that the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. So right now, he's control of all the different things that's going around this world that was given to him by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So he's blinding the minds of them which believe not. And that's a part of his witchcraft, his sorceries, going to his mainstream media. That's why majority of these people, they think that when they see so-called UFOs, this is talking about green aliens with big heads. Or you see dealing with Esau's commercials with this tissue brand called Angel Soft, but they will portray so-called white naked babies as the angels of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is nothing but blasphemy. And that's just one of the many reasons why Yahweh by Hashem is going to destroy America from off the face of the earth. So pursuant to the book of Job 9, 24, as it says, he covered the faces of the judges thereof. And the main judges are Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh the heavenly father, and his only begotten son, trickling on down to the angels, trickling on down to the Israelites. And dealing with the nobility of Esau Edom, they've been pushing out these blasphemies since they've been in rulership. So now dealing with Esau Edom, you have his Air Force reporting these so-called UFO reports. The satellites are capturing them more and more. And now regular people are recording these so-called UFO sightings and putting it up on social media. And it's just like Yahweh Bashem Yahushua antagonizing the elites of Esau Edom. Because more and more of these so-called UFO sightings are like a nightmare to Esau's rulership. 
That's why I stated in the book of Zechariah, the fifth chapter, this is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth. So it's going to be a curse or misfortune to Esau, Edom, and also with these other nations that are joint heirs with Esau, Edom, and two thirds of our people that have subscribed to Esau, Edom, because they are just like these other nations right now. But to us, as the hopefully let, as it says in Lamentations, the third chapter, blesses the man that hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So this is a part of our meal ticket to get up out of this hellhole. But going back again, it said, In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Shai, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. So going back into gospel, meaning good news. So this is a part of our good news that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And a part of our glorious gospel of Yahweh Shai, through the Spirit, is to teach our people, but more so the elect of our people, the ones that have the eyes that see and the ears that hear, that spiritual I salve that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's a part of the good news. But the good news is not given to every single person on this earth. It's a balance to it. So one of the main factors of us to get to the kingdom of heaven, as it says in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter of the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven, which is going to be a total righteous divine sovereignty. So part of that good news and that main factor for us to get to that type of glorious state is the so-called UFOs, the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for that great deliverance. And one of the key definitions for deliverance, it goes into to rescue from bondage or danger. So the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are in danger right now, whether you know it directly or indirectly. But Yahweh by Shem Yahushua are going to deliver only the ones that are going to seek him in these last days. The ones that are going to draw nigh to him. Those are the ones that he's going to deliver through these glorious chariots. And this is the book of Isaiah 26 verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. And my people, again, is referencing to the elect of the nation of Israel. Pursuant to the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, the Israel of the Most High. Referring to the ones that are going to walk according to Yahweh by Shem Yahushua's rule, that righteous standard. So come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, which represents these glorious chariots, the so-called UFOs, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the end of the nation be overpassed. And the end of the nation, or that righteous anger, is referring to when Yahweh comes back, he's going to be wet strong with the thousands of heaven, and he's going to subdue all these different nations that are in league, beginning with Esau, Edom. And he's going to come into the house of the thief, which represents America, known as Babylon the Great. And according to the book of Revelation, that this place, America, will be eliminated within one hour by Yahweh Shai and the angels and also those nuclear missiles. Verse 21, for behold, the Lord coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And now his place is referencing the spiritual realm and how he's going to invade this earthly realm along with the chariots. It says in the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, how I have long time holding my peace. So that's when Yahushua comes back. He's going to scream like a travailing woman. And you know how when a woman is screaming when she's in those labor pains, it's not a pleasant sight. So it says, For behold, the Lord coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also should disclose her blood and should no more cover her slain. So when Yahweh comes back on his second coming, which represents a second death, he's going to plead with all flesh that's not right with him. And this is Joel 2 verse 32. And it should come to pass that whosoever should call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And the only ones that have that key to salvation are the elect of the nation of Israel. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So again, remember that the word deliverance goes back to to rescue from bondage or danger, which are the prey that departed not. So we are the ones that are in danger, in harm's way, sighing, crying for all the abominations done in the midst thereof. Vets in the spirit of the filthy conversation of the wicked. So we are crying out to our power source, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, like, come get us, come get us. And we're begging. So the Most High Yahweh, as it says that he's not a man, that he should lie. And trickling on down to his own begotten son, Yahweh Shah, 
like father, like son. So they have to stand on their word that they're going to come back and deliver the elect of the nation of Israel from the four corners of the earth. As the Lord have said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call, I was going right back to that small remainder, the elect, the chosen, the few. And this is the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, the 26th verse. Men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So it's going to get so treacherous out here that when they see Yahweh Shai coming back along with the chariots, people are really going to be having heart attacks out here. Linking up with the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, how they should be troubled with fear and they should be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Because you have to think about it with Esau's iconoclasm, which he destroyed the so-called dark images because so-called Negroes were ruling in the times of the so-called dark ages in Europe. Here comes Esau, the serpent, the deceiver, during his reset period or his rebirth period or his renaissance period. And he plastered over our faces or our images and he put up his own images of his own kind, his own likeness. And that's one of the main reasons how he has deceived the whole world. So these people, including two thirds of our people are so messed up in the head. So they think when the Messiah, if they even do believe on the Messiah, when he comes back, he's gonna look like a so-called Caucasian. So you gotta think about it. men's hearts are gonna be filling them. A lot of people out here are gonna be dropping dead from heart attacks. When they see Yahweh Shah, so called black man with white woolly hair, he's gonna be a very angry so called black man, along with the angels, which are so called dark skinned men. Then, on top of that, they're gonna be amazed that they're only gonna be delivering so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners. But the ones of our people that look like these other nations, but their spirit goes back to Yahshua Allah, but the elect of those particular individuals. So men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven should be shaken. So these elites, they're going to be shaking their boots because once they see this, they know that's the end to their rulership. And they've been ruling for a good amount of time and they have not been working ever since they've been to rulership. So when they see Yahweh Shai cracking those clouds along with the chariots, they know that's the end to their rulership and they're going right into slavery. Thus say Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai build the scriptures. Verse 27, and then should they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that cloud again is referencing to these so-called UFOs or these so-called UAP, which is an aerial phenomenon, which is going to be something remarkable that we have never seen before. This is Yahweh Shai's second debut on the earth. So you know, as an Israelite man, he's going to come with style. Verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh. And that's only speaking to the elect of the nation of Israel. The ones are really looking forward to this so-called white man going down and for you. How about Shema Shah set up his righteous new world order on this planet earth throughout this whole universe when this whole earth is going to be dwelling in righteousness. So again, hearing or seeing these so-called UFO reports it's definitely a part of our meal ticket to get about this prison planet, which represents our captivity. So when we're seeing these different articles, UFO report, U.S. says can identify one of 144 flying objects with high confidence. So for us as the hopeful elect, it's time to lift up our heads because our redemption draw it not. And notice the spiritual number right here, 144. As it says in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So this is like a spiritual marathon for the hopeful elect. And this thing that we call life, our different journeys that we had to go through in this ministry. So while we're going through this spiritual marathon, that's why you continually see numbers like 144, whether it be on a vehicle tag, or you might see it on a clock, or you might see something like 777 or 444. Those are spiritual numbers, and that's like the angels are motivating you to continue to keep on within this spiritual marathon because your redemption draw it not. So that's a spiritual number for this article to say, U.S. says can identify one of 144 flying objects with high confidence. Because 144 represents the 144,000 pursuant to the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, which are going to be the government body of Yahweh Shai in the next kingdom to come, which is the kingdom of heaven. 
That's going to be the 12,000 men out of each tribe for the 12 tribes of Israel. So I'll be right this out. You always edify with that. You all stay strong. Keep pushing forward. Shalom.